was not in response to any particular question, but it's more um, just an amusing and informative bit uh, rel relating to my personal circumstances, um, i.e. being a swordsman in Georgia. Um, and I, I, I don't have any armor. I don't practice armored fighting or harness fechten, as it's called. Uh, strictly bloss fechten for now. I would like to get into armored fighting at some point, but that's many moons down the line. But anyway, um, so first I'll, I'll give you a rundown of some of the weapons and gear that I have that I that I practice with. My predominant area of study, as I said, is German longsword. Um, I picked up this wooden uh, waster or waster. Um, at the Museum Replicas warehouse sale a couple years back. Um, it's got a good solid weight to it, I, and it's a very nice length. I stand up and leave my head out of frame. There it is. Uh, yeah. Comes up right about to the sternum, so good length for me. Um, nice, sturdy. I like the wheel pommels a little uh, passe for the time when the longsword was... Uh, prevalent, but eh, I, it looks nice. Um, so I use that primarily for solo drills because it's got a good weight to it. When I'm not using that, I use, this is again, a uh, windlass. Um, most of, all of my steel pretty much I got at from Museum Replicas because they're local and they have their big warehouse sale every year and I get stuff on the cheap because I'm po. Um, but this is their 15th century longsword. Um, this one actually has quite an edge on it. It's very sharp. And uh, I named this one Belethiel after my friend Brianna. Um, she knows that story. But yeah, it's a very nice, very uh, fun piece. I like the side rings on it. Uh, and I practice with this. It's a little small for my liking is the only thing. Um, it's much smaller than the wooden one, as you can see. Um, there's significant difference in length to it. Um, and me being a, I'm about 6'4", I like a longer weapon. Um, so take that how you will. Uh, but I do practice with this a fair bit, and it's what I do test cutting with, because it's, it's the only really sharp one that I have. It's good for test cutting. Uh, but it's a really, it's a really fun sword. And I've got this uh, arming sword. It's fairly standard, generic, um, wide, broad, cutting blade, tapers to a point, fuller. Uh, I use this one for practicing sword and buckler, um, 133 sword and buckler. Uh, a little bit of the Tallhofer open sword and buckler, where you have the Dagger held, that's fun stuff. Um, good for multiple opponents. I also use it. With this big bastard. This is um, the windless Viking air. Oh, how? Yeah. Um, get to that in a second. Uh, the windless Viking shield. Um, I picked it up because it was, again, at the replica set, at the warehouse sale, and it was like 50 bucks. So I was just like, eh. Um, I don't particularly like it. It's about half again as heavy as it ought to be. Um, the grip is uncomfortable. I don't know about this conical um, boss on it either. Um, the back's wrapped in felt. I mean, it's a it's a nice display piece, but it is a bit heavy for using for single grip Viking shield kind of stuff. Um, that is good in a sense because it gives me a awesome workout. If you see why my uh, left shoulder has been getting bigger lately, it's because of this thing. But uh, you know, it's good for practice, and it's 50 bucks. I can't complain. All right. Um, I also practice with this falchion. Um, falchions are fun, they're cool, big, broad, single-edged, choppy cleaver type swords. Um, now, there's no, that I know of, uh, manuals on 
falchions, but there are on the German Langsmesser, or Grossmesser, big knife, which is, it differs slightly from this. This actually has a proper swordy type grip on it. Um, you know, curvy quillins, but it does have one feature on it that is similar to a Messer, which is this uh, bit of quill in here that on a Messer would be here, but it's called a Nagel or Nail, and it protects the hand when doing certain parries like that, so it stops the blade running down. So it's cool, and um, I've, I like Messers. I think they're neat, um, so I'll practice with this uh, alone or with a buckler, or if I just get bored and really wanky, I will do this in my offhand and um, the longsword in my uh, right hand, and that's just, that's purely for fun. That's when I want to feel cool, like I'm in an action movie or something. Alright, um, I don't do a whole lot of rapier practice because I don't have a rapier when I need to demonstrate or think about something when I'm like choreographing stage fights in my mind. Uh, I use this. This was five bucks. I have two of them. It's a piece of shit, to be quite frank, but yeah, that's what I needed to. Um, cold steel, um, polycarbonate, indestructible, absolutely useless for training with someone else, because this thing is, I mean, it's a monster. It's I mean, this is going to take. This is pretty much indestructible, but whatever it hits is probably not. Uh, I do use this for some pell work, and just because it's he it's heavy, the balance is just pretty bad. Um, so I don't like it. I don't use it too much, but I have it just in case. It was a gift. This is the uh, windless sword of Pavia. It's a bit rusty because it needs a little TLC on the guard, but um, this is where I practice Spadone Montante's Vihunter. Great sword uh, stuff with. It's pretty good. bit wobbly because, let's face it, it's big and it's windless, so it's decent, but I, I try not to put it through too much abuse because you know, I, I don't expect it would head hold up to too much real but for just training with um you know the the montante or spadone stuff it's uh it's perfectly serviceable i like it it's fun it weighs about six and a half pounds and it's a very large blade <laughs> and it just makes me happy um lots of fun this one I don't practice with this much, but I have it, and it's nice. It's a Falcata Kelto Iberian sword. It's uh, it's an axe that thinks it's a sword. I mean, this is a a chopper. I can go through hardwood with this, no problem. Uh, this one does have a pretty decent edge to it. It's got enough of one to just cleave things like there's no tomorrow. So uh, fun little piece. I don't know. We don't have any real records on using the Falcata, so I just sort of have to guess, but. It's fun to have. All right, uh, so that brings me to the last point. As you can see, when I when I picked up the shield by the edge here, I it's very hot because it's in the sun and it's metal and it's Georgia. It's a thousand degrees outside, so I uh, have to be careful sometimes when I pick up. The bucklers are really bad about it because they are all sealed, covered in leather. So I have to make sure that I don't leave it with the grip. In the sun, otherwise I'll pick it up and just sear bits of my hand. Um, but the funniest problem that I encounter, other than the ones that cause me severe personal pain by burning myself, are with these. I, these are the uh, Rawlings Night Shop synthetic sparring swords. I really like these. I use these um, because they are pretty safe. They'll still you'll still know if you got hit. Trust me. Um, but they're safe. They're inexpensive. But when left in the heat, they just become <laughs> noodles because they're 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 nylon, so they're not made to hold up to that level of heat. And it's just funny when you're when you're sparring and your sword just flops about because it's been in the heat too long and it's lost a lot of its rigidity. Uh, I also have the basket hilt. This is the only 
about the only thing I have that I can practice um, saber with. Uh, I don't have a saber or a Highland broadsword or an English backsword or any of those things. I, I, they're on my agenda. I'm going to get them. But in the meantime, this is the best I got. I'm practicing that kind of stuff. Um, and I can definitely recommend these. They're not expensive. They're pretty solidly made. And uh, they, they work with minimal safety equipment. So they're really good. Um, if you have any questions about any of the other stuff that I own or use, let me know.